fellow dear friends all over the world good evening lovers of freedom good evening friends of biafra people I am very privileged to be here this evening, this day of October 2022, to address Biafra people, as of course, the spoke person of Biafra. You are welcome to listen to this groundbreaking broadcast that will be centered on the recent event, the event that is happening targeting at Biafra people. I want you to understand that we will continue to move forward and to move ahead of our enemies. I will want to inform you today that we are officially just 133 days to go. I want to inform you people today that Biafra has moved to the liberation phase. We have moved from the rhetoric to actions. And that we have 133 days to go. The time for rhetoric is over. I want to inform you today, for those of you who have been part of this movement for a while, in case you do not know who you are to fight for freedom, if you don't know what freedom fighting is all about, freedom fighters are those, those people who fight for freedom of their country. And of course, many of them sacrifice their life there are those people because of whom we are able to celebrate our various independence in our various country today for you to be part of a country that you celebrate independence means that some people have led their life for that country to have their independence so if you find yourself today Amongst the IPOB autopilot, it means you are a freedom fighter. And your job is to fight against your colonizers, against the oppressors for your freedom. For those of you who may be residing in one country or the other, and you are against what we are doing, you may need to go and get yourself educated. Because... The country where you reside today, they celebrate independence. And in case those countries where you reside today celebrate independence, it means they get liberated from some certain forces. They got liberation from some certain oppressors. It means people fought for where you are enjoying today. And that's exactly what this generation of which you and I is proud to do the same for Biafra future, for the generation unborn and for the current generation. That is why no court of law will sentence and jail Mazinamdikano. Mazinamdikano's actions has not violated any known law known by man. Because Nigeria is never a country that 
respect its own laws and constitution. Today, even when the court in the same Nigeria have acquitted and discharged him, they couldn't allow him to go. Still, they continue to show us and tell us the reason we must fight harder to leave a country like that. The continual incarceration of Mazin and Dikano has vindicated most of us, apart from the criminality of Nigeria, apart from the crime that Nigeria committed by going to a different country to kidnap another citizen and redition him to Nigeria. It means that our fight has been vindicated. And it will call for you who have been sidelining or who have been backing down from this movement to rise up. Because what they are doing to Mazinam Dekano is a confirmation that we must do everything to leave the contraption by 2023. I want you to know that freedom fighters are people when people who revolt against the colonizers, oppressors, and stood up for their country and their people. This is exactly what every one of us are doing today for Biafra. Those who have served through the ages have drawn inspiration from the book of Isaiah, when the Lord says, Whom shall I send? Who shall go for us? And of course, Mazen Namdikano, Eastern Security Network, ESN, answering for a long time. They have answered to this call even from the Bible. Here I am. Lord, send me. Here I am. Send me. Today, Mazen Namdikano is incarcerated for choosing this job or maybe the job that God have assigned, assigned him to do. And so as many of you who have paid the biggest price, even with your family once having been killed by the Nigeria terrorist state. We want to inform you today that the time has come. The time to fight Nigeria Fulani terrorist and the repentant Boko Haram in the Nigeria army terrorizing our people is not the time to fight them is not the aftermath of their attack. We will continue to make this particular thing very clear. The time to attack those coming to kill us in our land is not the aftermath of when they have come to attack us. The best defense is to attack. It is very every day and every day we will continue to fight them. At the same time, we fight for the Biafra liberation. We also take solemn vow to eradicate terrorists, both those in uniform and those of the non-state actors that were imported from the neighboring countries to fight us. To build a Biafra that is freer and more secure, is exactly what we are doing today. I want to repeat this again. On this State of the Nation broadcast today, we have moved the Biafra liberation from rhetorics to action. This is an, a word that you must underline. We have moved from rhetoric to action. I want to lend a voice from the famous word of Kwame Nkrumah in his famous midnight speech. After the Ghana liberated themselves from the oppressors, Kwame Nkrumah in his famous speech said, and I quote, at long last, battle has ended. It involves battle. Fight for independence and freedom involves battle. Kwame Nkrumah continued in his speech and choose, Ghana, your beloved country, is free forever. Our independence is meaningless. 
unless it is linked up with the total liberation of the African continent. And the vision of Nkwame Nkrumah for the liberation of African continent is what the Biafra people are doing today. It is a just fight, a just cause, and our right that nobody can take away from us. Whoever wants the best of the African continent must look beyond this particular dangerous diversity and shine called Nigeria. As Biafra draw close, with no election, we have just 133 days to go. They are still panicking and wondering what the Biafra people are going to do. Some Biafra people today will take them on away. With the latest event happening across Nigeria, especially in Biafra territory, following the destruction of trucks laden with goods and services in Biafra land by the Nigeria Boko Haram controlled military in Biafra land. Now it is time for the Biafra people to look into formulating a proper civil defense doctrine under something similar to the Eastern Security Network. Biafrans are cracking their brains, bringing good ideas to the table, what you should do going forward. And to this note, we call on the market unions in Biafra land, starting from Anambra State, because we see that the burning and destruction of trucks is just started. More of these destructions are coming. So this evening, we are calling on the market unions in Biafra land, starting from all the markets in Anambra State down to the lowest in Biafra territory, to begin from today with immediate effect, formulate what we call the Eastern Civil Rescue. They can also give it any name that befit them. The job of these people should be to implement many things, including safeguarding some of the goods. When the enemy come to destroy those trucks, they are going to guide the place, safeguard it against more destructions and looters. It is very imperative to say that such civil defense doctrine would not include bearing of arms for obvious reasons being that if they bear arms, they will attract open confrontation from the terrorist government. From the intels that we have at our disposal, more of this attack would come. And we do not want to deploy the Eastern Security Network to an open confrontation at this moment. Because if we do send the Eastern Security Network to safeguard those trucks, it may bring in exactly the aim, the reason why they are now destroying trucks. So for this reason, we are calling on the market union in Biafra land, not just in Biafra land, they have to collaborate with other markets across Nigeria to have a uniform civil defense doctrine that could immediately swing into action when these criminals and terrorists have, have finished their assault. And I want to inform you this evening that when such civil defense from the unions in the market are formed, they can go into 
planning and controlling the civil defense organization, disseminating air raid and evacuation warning due to federal military troops reprisal attack that will occur or that could occur after this terrorist government have engaged with our liberation forces or with whomever they normally engaged in gun duel. Our community has been ravaged with flood in addition to the attack coming from the Nigeria military controlled by the Boko Haram because we know they're controlled by the Boko Haram as we have seen on different confession and those that have been arrested supplying arms to the Boko Haram. Today, we understand that the ISWAP is now in southern Nigeria and the United States Embassy have just given warning in its website today, warning of an attack, planned attack by the terrorists Boko Haram and ISWAP in Abuja and warn its citizens to be very security conscious. This warning is not just applicable to Abuja alone. It's also happening in Biafra land. And instead of our elite to concentrate on making use of our security men and personnel, the Eastern Security Network, since the Nigeria state security has been compromised and they are now infiltrated by terrorists because of their corruption, cases and files, they decide to stay quiet and keep mute. But we believe that the market and the businessmen in our land are not government officials. They engage in businesses. And they also, to this point, have some kind of right to protect their business by themselves, as we have witnessed in different occasions. This particular civil defense that we are proposing today will provide of relief and assistance to an affected area visited by the Nigeria terrorist army when they have gone to, if they go to any village and sack the village and rassad the village, bomb and destroy properties. After they have gone, we are going to mobilize this civil group that will be in a volunteer form to go and swing into action to such village, especially supplying food material and whatever that is needed, whatever is, that is available, whatever that the Biafra people has made available to this particular village. The report, they also have to engage in a reportage they have to report the damage and organize first aid and rescue work to the affected people. We are going to make sure that there is going to be an access to ambulance where it is needed or vehicle to quickly transport seriously wounded people to hospitals. This has not been put in place and we have recorded a lot of bombardment in Biafra land. The government have not provided this. So it has become imperative that we swing into actions. This civil defense will also rapidly repair minor damages to essential services like water mains, amenities and critical infrastructures, as well as demolish dangerous structure and remove debris when necessary. I want the elite and the businessmen and women in Biafra to pay attention to this particular State of the Nation address. I see it's going to affect you very, very positively if you heed to these particular directives. This civil defense retain, will retain or could be an auxiliary volunteer firefighting crew with access to trailer with pump in every major municipality or town. You must take this very serious. 
We also will be soliciting for relief materials when this particular civil defense has been set up by market unions. When it is set up, it will be announced and we will solicit for relief material both from home and abroad. This particular defense, civil defense, will be able to have access to warehousing, large buildings like churches, schools, and even open field in case of emergency where welfare services like temporary shelter information and registration can be collected and conducted we are giving you this ahead of time there could be more functionalities that can be included as soon as this particular civil defense is implemented. It must not be called civil defense. The market union could go give it a different name because we want some certain things to be handled in a very low key. I want to inform Biafras today that as Biafra draw closer the enemies are planning and we need to be ahead of them in order not to clash with the nigeria federal terrorist authority it must be kept very simple something even private citizen is allowed according to the nigeria law the current law allow you to engage in a voluntary a voluntary services community services it doesn't need to be registered it doesn't need to go through the cac registration it does not need to be paid it does not need to work for money we need to showcase the evil atrocities perpetuated against biafra people by state and non-state actors, those likely working under the federal terrorist state. This particular group will also engage in coordinating relief program for Biafra experiencing these kind of atrocities, like I have mentioned earlier. The Eastern Civil Rescue, or as you may call it, can operate as a volunteer apparatus to provide passive and proactive civil persistent situational awareness. I want to inform you today that a team, these teams, She'll be able to appear shortly at the scene of this wanton calamity as evidence in what happened at Onicha in Anambra State, where many trucks were burnt and destroyed. Many goods were as well destroyed because the Nigeria state understand that Biafra is coming. This is going to happen in other part of Biafra land. And we are now informing you the best preventive measures that we are going to take. This particular group should at least be part to condone the areas of to prevent looting by passerby and tubulate or register the destruction. This would enable the owners of the trucks and trailers to at least pick up some pieces for a compass and a compensation in the future. So we do not want any Biafra to get hot, especially your business. 
Now that we have discovered that Nigeria State are planning something, even those of you who may not support Biafra, you are paying the price. So we have to come up with something very, very positive and in a way to safeguard your goods and services from destruction by the Nigeria army. To achieve this, we must work in conjunction with some form of liaison with the market association and the union also to ensure the Biafra owners can pick up the pieces. So it is the time for the market union to rise up. Market associations from Biafra land to other parts of Nigeria to wake up because these goods that are coming to Anambra to other parts of Biafra land came from Lagos and other parts of Nigeria. It is clear to us that the federal terrorist government aim is to cause disharmony within the Biafra population by inflicting such pain. Loss to alienate the civil populace from the liberation forces. It is expected this would be regular occurrence as the date of Biafra restoration draw closer. That's why we have to call you and call your attention. And then of course, tell you some of the things that you need to do and let us move forward. If uh, those that we, the liberation, need to do, we don't need to inform you. We will implement it before you knowing about it. This Eastern Civil Rescue, as you may call it, would not be profit or commercial entity that does not require to be registered in the Nigeria Corporate Affairs Commission. And it also wouldn't be considered as an NGO. We still need, which still needs some legal state. So we don't need to go into that. What you need to do is for the union to put a mechanism within its unions and association and have volunteers who would go into actions immediately such atrocities has been committed by the Nigeria army. After they have deserted the place, they will go and safeguard whatever that remains. Having said this, we now proceed to Igbo Biafra, Igbo Biafra market, especially in Lagos. This evening, we are going to make a special pronouncement. Before this pronouncement, we want to inform you people what is actually going on in Lagos. We are officially announcing to the Nigeria state criminal gangs terrorizing Ndibu in Lagos market that the time is up. People do misunderstood what is Agboro and the Alaye. The Alaye doesn't have a tribe. The Alaye are a breed of criminals from Nigeria. Alaye cut across ethnic board. Alboro, they are from Yorubas, they are from Igbo, they are from Hausa, and they cut across ethnic groups. A lot of people, only when you talk about Lagos Alboro, they, they think always that it has to do with Yoruba as a tribe. That's a very fat lie. I want to correct that narrative today that Alboro in Lagos, there are Igbos amongst them. Alboro in Lagos, there are Yorubas amongst them. Alboro in Lagos, there are Hausas, even Fulanese amongst them. And that is why 
we are going to make sure that we fight these criminal gangs that officially is being controlled by a man called Bola Ahmed Tunubu. So when you talk about Agro in Lagos, we are referring to criminal gangs, certified criminal gangs that cut across ethnic lines. And today, we are giving them the first warning that in as much as Igbo businesses are paying whatever tax officially in their state and their various state in Nigeria, the criminal gangs that is being championed by Tinubu, we are calling on them today that from Today, going forward, you will not go and attack any Igbo market in Lagos. You must abide by the rules of the market and whatever the chairman of that Igbo market, they anonymously agreed that is going to be binding on them. I want to inform you also that what is happening in Igbo market in Lagos, it is not just about the Igbo. Yorubas are victims. Aousas are victims. Anybody who is in Nigeria and have anything to do either buying or selling in those markets, you are a victim of Tinubu criminal gangs. These criminal organized crime gangs of Tinubu is not only molesting and terrorizing the Igbo people, they also terrorize customers who are not Igbos. So we don't want people to think that this has to do with Igbo. In those markets, there are Yorubas who own shops in those markets, but we are taking it upon ourselves that the fight for the liberation of Biafra people and the way this government sponsored criminals to terrorize and bully the Igbos, we are bringing it to an end. We are ready to fight you in any way you bring it. And we are warning these criminal gangs in Lagos, if you think that you will continue to go and terrorize the Igbo market in Lagos, from Ladikbo to Alaba International Market, what is happening in Alaba International Market today, I wait you. And we are calling on those chairmen of those market who have not stood up to their responsibility to do that immediately. We say that you can't fight us with criminal gangs. Destroy, molest, why we still pay you tax. We told you people one time ago that this time around the fight will not be in Nigeria. It, is going to, it will not be in Biafra. The liberation of Biafra will be fought everywhere until the day Biafra will be pronounced an independent nation. We are going to fight within Nigeria, inside Nigeria, until Biafra come. The days you molest, terrorize us in the name of organized criminal gangs called Agburo is over. I want this message to be shared everywhere. The fight is also to liberate Yorubas who have been caged by this criminal syndicate organized crime gang that Tinubu have installed in Lagos. And all they do is to terrorize thinking that they are terrorized in Dibu. Meanwhile, Yorubas also are victim of this criminal gang. They do not represent Yoruba so from today, if you think that these are Yorubas, you better change your perspective about them. They have Igbos in them. They have Yorubas in them. If you doubt me, you go and make your investigation, which we have done several years. This organized criminal gang comprising of Igbos, Yorubas, Hausa, and other ethnic nationalities. The people usually call them Alaye as Yorubas. 
but I'm here to inform you again once more that they are not Yorubas. There is no ethnic group or ethnic nationality. The criminals are criminals and they are called organized criminal gang. And we have just come to inform them that what is happening in Alaba International Market today will be a child play going forward. As Biafra draw closer, they are going to fight us and fight us everywhere we are. And that's why we are making preparation that we are going to engage any criminal group, be you who, within the Nigeria system. And those of them who will tell you, you want to instigate war against Yoruba and Igbo, I have made it very clear. This has nothing to do with the one nation. We are intact. This has nothing to do with Igbo nation. We are intact. It has to do with the criminal gang, organized crime gang, terrorizing in the Igbo in Lagos, because those markets are predominantly the Igbos. But of course, many number of Yorubas are also victims of these criminal, organized criminal gangs. That is controlled by Tunubu. We also know how they have molested our people in Ladipo. They say that the Tunubu daughter is the owner of the market and therefore they continue to chase Indigo away. We also understand that Ladipo International Market or Ladipo Market has been under siege for a while. Tomorrow, Alaba International Market will be locked down. And of course, I trust the leadership. Our voices will be heard. The warning goes to the criminals that we are out to fight and defend our people. This is going to happen everywhere, not just in Lagos. Very soon, we are also heading to Abuja. It is going to happen in Abuja as well. Those who come to steal, destroy, and kill us in our marketplaces, we are going to face them. And after this particular phase of liberation of Biafra, you will know that, yes, indeed, this generation of Biafra is not the kind of generation you are going to toy with. We therefore call on Tinubu to hold his criminal gangs and call them to order, to leave Ibu market alone. Lagos state, if they don't know how to govern a state in a modern society, they should go and get themselves educated and copy from different countries how to collect revenue. The intimidation, the toggery, the terrorizing of our people in different markets in Nigeria is coming to an end. We know that Biafra is coming and we have a few months to go. But in these few months, we are going to leave a mark that none of these criminals that Nigeria breed will ever forget how we exited, exited Nigeria. From here, from me, I say thank you very much and may God bless Biafra. Also, as we call the release of Mazin Namdikano, like I have said earlier, we are going to intensify the activities for Biafra liberation. You know, we gave ultimatum, ultimatum is over, and the Nigeria state will also continue to hear from us. For the last time, may God bless Biafra, May God bless Eastern Security Network. May God bless all the commanders. May God bless all those who have volunteered and contributed to the liberation of Biafra up to this point. May God bless all the aces, all the chiefs who are behind the Biafra struggle. May God bless all of you, both the countries that have shown interest to support Biafra. May God bless you. And may we continue to remain in the path of truth. Remember, freedom fighting is a right. It's a right that you must exercise to the fullest. I call you all to continue to stand on the path of truth. Truth 
we must follow until the Biafra that we crave and want will be achieved. These 133 days to go must not be something we are going to take for a joke. We wish you see future so that you will not be part of those who will shout, had I known. From here, from me, is good evening.